morning, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So today's video is the long-awaited sewing room tour. Um, I know how much you've all been waiting for this. So thank you so much for those of you that are just tuning into my channel now. For those of you that have been with me for a while, you will know that up until the new year, my sewing room was in the smallest room in the house upstairs. And I was rapidly outgrowing that space. It was the smallest bedroom and I have a huge fabric stash if you haven't already guessed. And yeah, it just became too much. My daughter who moved out a couple of years ago comes home to stay regularly and that's the room where she has to sleep. And I know a few of you have been quite worried when she's come to stay that the fabric mountain may just topple over and suffocate her during the night. Thankfully that's not happened yet. And hopefully it won't happen now. Back in December, my daughter had the most amazing idea. We have a large dining room in our house and we're very fortunate that we, that we also have a very big conservatory that fills the back of the house. So, my daughter had this amazing idea to turn what was the dining room, which is the space I'm in now, into a sewing room come craft space. And it was just like a light bulb moment, basically. Yeah, I mean, we've always used it as a dining room. However, as the kids have got older, you know, we don't tend to eat in here really, unless it's special occasions. And so when we bought our house originally, the previous owners, did have their dining table. Well, they had two actually. They had a dining they had a dining table in the dining room and they also had a table and chairs in the conservatory as well. So we knew that there was space to do that. So we made the decision we were just gonna go for it and see see how it suited us. And I'm really pleased to say it's working really well. So I thought you'd like to have a look around. Now I know I've been teasing you all with a few pics on Instagram and in my last two vlogs as well, you've just seen this little space, but I wanted to really wait until the whole place was finished. However, it's not finished and it's not gonna be finished for a little while because this week, those of us in the UK have gone into another lockdown, which means a lot of our stores are now closed again, and we have been advised and guided to stay at home unless we're going to work and working from home if we can. I can't because I'm a frontline worker. Yeah, and only going out the house for essentials. So before this happened, I think we knew we were heading that way and I did manage to get to Ikea at the beginning of the year just to get bits of furniture and things I needed for this space. So I'm really pleased that I did that because I would be really frustrated now because I think this lockdown is going to extend into March. There's still a few bits and pieces that we do need to get to make this, you know, to totally finish it off. And I need my pegboards that I got from Ikea previously that are upstairs in the old sewing room, putting up on this wall here. Martin needs to get around to doing that at some point. So, but I didn't wanna, I, I wanted to put you out of your misery because I know how much many of you are desperate to see this space and I just didn't think it was fair to leave it any longer. So I'm gonna show you around and see what you think. Right, I hope you can see me. I think you're a little bit wonky, but um, it'll be fine. It will be fine. We will manage, won't we? So. Here I am in what was my old dining room and now is my fabulous new sewing room. I will show you around all the areas in a little bit more detail soon, but I thought I would start off with just, you know, a bit of a, um, a bit of a big space picture so that you can just see the space that we've got. So what you can see in front of me is the center of the room and we have two of these lin liniment table tops. I think they are and these were from Ikea and I've got them together so that it makes this really really big cutting space and it's fantastic. I've got the front one here, this was the one that was actually my sewing table upstairs so the top of it is a little bit chipped in places but it's absolutely fine and then this is the new one, I got a second one to be able to put these together to make a really big cutting space. It's also going to be the space where I film tutorials and sew alongs and things, so I'm really pleased with it. The, the table at the front here is rested on two trestles, which I'll show you from another angle shortly, and this 
table is on calyx units and the calyx units are the four whole calyx units that I've got under this table and I've got it raised at a, at a level that's really good for me. I'm five foot ten and previously I used to cut out on my dining table and always found that quite difficult because it was a lot lower than this table and you know it would hurt my back etc whereas now this is quite a nice height to cut out on so this is the center space of the room and then around the outside of the room as you can see I've got a couple of windows here where we've got a couple of desks so I'll show you those in a little bit more detail shortly Right, so I've just moved to the side. My cutting table is just here. You probably can't really see it, but this side of the room now, where the piano used to be, for those of you that have followed me for a while, we've now got a big calyx unit that is a four hole by three hole unit. And we've got some of the inserts for this calyx unit. So I've got two lots of drawers, and then at the bottom that you can't see at the minute because it's just out of shot, I've got the cupboard doors. So um, this is a great storage space and it's, it just works really well here. And I've still got lots of space if I want to get something else up here. At the minute, I've got some of the little shelves to go up on the wall. Although Martin and Judy, who has had a look through the window, bless her, I do think that that looks quite good as it is on top of the calyx. I've still got some fairy lights up as well, which is great. And I'm really happy with how this unit works in the corner of this room. It still means I've got a fair bit of space to get around my cutting table as well. And um, it's not full yet. I've still got a lot of things upstairs that I need to fill this with. But it's just great storage space to have. And I know I'm a little bit dark here because of the light, but um, I'm over the other side of the old dining room now, sewing room. Um, again, you can see the cutting table here. And this side of the room, we've got double doors here that go through into the conservatory, but then the table and chairs is beyond that that used to be in here. And I've got my ironing board set up ready here i've got my tracing paper my big roll of tracing paper then i've got my little my little kitchen trolley unit thing there again i'll show you that in a little bit more detail shortly and then just at the back of the room we've got two desks and identical chairs for um for, for all my sewing stuff and martin's got his craft stuff as well so i'm going to take you off the tripod now and just go around the room and show you what's what Right, so I'm now obviously behind the camera. As you can see, these are the two Linman, I think they're called Linman, but I will leave all the details below in the description box. And this first table here with the two trestles underneath was actually my old sewing table from upstairs. And as I mentioned earlier, it is a little bit chipped um, from where scissors used to drop off onto the top of it, but it, you know, it's, it's absolutely fine still. So they weren't expensive. I think these are £29 each. Um, so I just bought another one that I could put them together to make this lovely sewing table. I've got three projects cut out there, ready to start sewing up. So underneath my table on this trestle, I've got my cover stitch machine there stored away because I don't use it all the time and I just leave it stored there. I think it's out of the way, ready for when I do need to use it. And then under this one, I've got one of these lovely little fabric storage baskets. This was actually what my Christmas presents was in for my daughter. So um, I just thought it would be great to use it there. And I've got a pattern cut out there, ready to, ready to choose some fabric for. So, being awkward, I'm gonna go around anti-clockwise. Now, our old dining unit that used to be over in that corner there is now here, just behind the door. Eventually, this is probably gonna go in the conservatory, but for now, it's just gonna stay there. And then over in this corner of the sewing room, I've got my ironing station set up with my iron obviously and then I've got my little kitchen trolley that's got loads of bits and bobs in there. I've got my Taylor's ham there and uh, yeah this still needs sorting out because there's loads of loads of stuff in here that isn't in any particular order so I do need to sort that out. This is my embroidery unit for my sewing machine which just stores nicely on there. 
I've got my more plan tracing paper here. This is a huge roll and I bought this about 12 months ago, I think. Originally got the idea from Sean. I think she's got the same one. And yeah, I use this for tracing off my patterns. I've got a roll of interfacing there that I've not started yet. This is just iron-on interfacing. Again, I will leave the link to the seller I use. I buy this off eBay. This is non-woven iron-on interfacing. And I use that for most garments, but I do have some better quality. I'm just moving around so you can see it. I do have some better quality interfacing that I use for coats and shirts and, you know, special occasion wear, that kind of thing. But this stuff is fine for everyday sewing. Got my little bin down there again that I got from Ikea. I think that was a pound. Little oil filled radiator because it does get quite chilly in here because when I'm at home sewing I don't want the heating on all day. So when it's particularly cold I'll just switch that on. I've got my cutting out boards that are just stored at the side of my desk here. And then moving round to the back of the sewing room we've got two of these desks. These are the Malm desks and they came with already integrated drawer and cupboard so we've got two of them because i have this one and a bit of that one as you can see because my overlock is on there and martin has that one so martin's into making tanks model tanks don't ask me why um and it's nice that we can actually sit together on an evening instead of being sat in front of the tv we can come in here i can do my sewing he can work on one of his tanks and it's quite nice so just going through what I've got on my desk, eventually, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have my pegboards put up there on the wall. But for the moment, I've brought a few of the bits and pieces from my pegboards down here. So in here, I keep all my different scissors and I've got my chalk pen there. I've got a couple of those. I've got my friction pens in here as well. I have my rotary cutter buttonhole maker which is there i've got more scissors pencils this is the lovely stretch ruler that judy bought me for um, before christmas and judy's christmas present to me was this actually this is the couturier's hand cream and it's gorgeous it smells amazing and it's so lovely so i keep that in there and yeah i've got stitch rippers this is the lovely seam ripper that the lovely Andy bought me for Christmas which um, I love using. I've got my buttonhole foot which keeps in there so again these do need a bit of a sort out. Got my computer on here as well, my Mac. I've got loads of pens and I have a chopstick that I use for poking corners and things. It's great for turning around ruler loops etc pins loads of pins judy bought got me this lovely coaster as well which is great and she also got me this from atelier brunette as well little wooden sewing reel it does say atelier brunette on there but you probably can't see it yeah more pins in there obviously my sewing machine i've got a couple of books on the shelf at the back but the majority of my sewing books are still upstairs or in the lounge my cover stitch machine is here set up and I've got one of these lamps from Ikea. I can't remember the name of this but it was £15 I think just for some extra light. Uh, we've got two of them actually so Martin's got one as well. Then in this drawer I keep there's more sewing shears there. I've got some feet for my sewing machine. I've got tape measures, hand wipes. Um, I've got a little little fab work sewing kit that I got from the knitting and stitching show a couple of years ago. I've got some machine oil there. Um, that's a kit for my cover stitch machine. I have one of the buttonhole gauges, Simflex expanding sewing gauge. It's great that. Use it a lot. Um, some needles, some sellotape, a little notepad. This was a lovely, a lovely little needle holder that the lovely Lorraine made for me when I went to the first sewing retreat down on the Isle of Wight and I use this all the time it's fantastic I've got my little USB with my embroidery files on so it's a bit of a what else is in here yeah just some more bits and pieces from a cover stitch machine so 
this cupboard i have got more more sewing tape i've got some ikea storage bags there and here i've got lots of cartridges for my printer because i do print off pdfs quite frequently i've got paper under there that at the back just there is my overhead camera holder for when i am filming tutorials so again this is probably not how it's gonna stay forever but for now it keeps things nice and tidy i've got my janome sewing machine there that's the smd something or other i can't remember what that is to be honest and that was the first sewing machine i bought before i got my faff a couple of years ago but i still keep that as a spare and for when bronte comes as well she uses it then moving across i've got my sewing diva picture that i bought from socializing in york and the frame came from the range in leicester and um, this is martin stuff which is not very interesting and i've got my printer there and my little guillotine for cutting when i'm make, um, putting pdfs together this is martin's drawer he's got stuff in there i don't know what he's got in here to be honest yeah all sorts of rubbish um i've got my chair that was in the conservatory now in the corner here which is quite nice to sit and just coming back to my cutting table before we move around to the other side of the room here i have the four four hole calyx unit and i've got some quilting rulers and french curve just at the side there this tub is full of overlocking threads all different colors and including some rainbow overlocking thread and then here i've got another french curve pattern master i think that one is actually and then i've got these little tubs that are full of all sorts of little notions there is bits of hardware and um self-covered buttons snaps and all sorts of things i've got buttons in that tub there and ribbon in the one just at the back this one here is full of bias binding all different colors of bias binding in here and i've got my stay tape as well which is great for shoulders on jersey tops and um it's iron on it's iron on stay tape it's great and i've got i've got these ones that i've just got from laura who's the specky stream seamstress i really love this one i think it's fab got my spray starch here it's great for really drapey fabrics that are difficult to handle so i usually spray this on and then you just iron it on and it just stiffens them up so it makes them easier to handle this is wash away tape so that's great for really sort of like viscose jersey fabrics if you're making into a top and you need to hem it i will stick this on because it's like double-sided before i sew it and then it holds it taut so you don't end up with that wavy hem and it just washes out in the wash so that's really cool i think i got that from amazon this is 505 spray which is used in quilting for sticking your quilt top to batting before you sew it um, before you quilt it on the machine there's a bit of that left so that's everything in there over here i've got some elastic there are some threads in there and i've got this tub with more elastics in and then moving round to the other side of the room this other calyx unit here i have all my embroidery bits and pieces in here so i've got lots of different embroidery threads this is the filmo filmo flex is it called interfacing that i got for jersey interfacing it's the iron on interfacing i think or the sticky back interfacing i can't remember which there's more threads in there and i've got my quilting hoops so that's all my quilting stuff there in this one here i've got more interfacings so this is pelon interfacing so this is a woven inter woven iron on interfacing i've got a bolt of that i've got some hair canvas here that is for a coat that i want to make and this is the, um, it's like iron-on wadding. This is the Couturier's interfacing that I got from Empress Mills to make my Gertie Princess coat with. And uh, I'm not sure what interfacing that is. It's some more woven interfacing for a coat, I believe. And I've got some of the Decaville under there and some more wadding. 
that I've used in bag making. This one here has got a couple of UFOs that still haven't been sewn together and then a bag of all sorts of different zips in there. There is all sorts. So that really needs a proper sort out. And then under here, I've got my pattern weights for when I am cutting out using my rotary cutter. I've got another tub full of appliques and ribbons and all sorts of stuff in there that needs sorting out. And then I've got curtain heading tape there for when I was planning to make curtains. So moving across to the Calyx unit that is at the side of the room. So this is what it looks like. At the bottom in those cupboards there are all my yarns. So I've got loads of yarn in there. So I'm not gonna go through those with you because it's really, you're really probably not interested. Nothing in that space at the minute, which is great. This is um, some works in progress, as you can see. I've got the shelves in that one and I've got another one of these tubs I think this was what Martin's Christmas presents were in so I've just bobbed that there for extra storage and in these two bits here are what I am working on in January and then I've got these drawers which are just fab and there's a couple of patterns in there that I need to stick together and um, yeah I've got more quilting rulers and bits and pieces in there that were freebies with magazines that I've not used yet a little glass vase and in this one I've just put some more elastic because again it needs to be properly sorted out this one has got more threads that I've got I need to get another thread stand actually for all these and then I've got I've just bought this thread stand and sorted all my threads out and I've done it in color order because I just think it looks amazing so it's doing Martin's head in to be honest because all the threads aren't the same ones so he said that I need to get the same thread so it all just looks neat and tidy because he's a bit OCD like that and then at the back I've got these little shelves and I've just displayed a selection of patterns so I've got my Gertie ones here because I'm really wanting to make a start on the princess coat I desperately want to make the Stanwick skirt as well I want to make this one now that I've lost weight and feeling a bit more confident I just really really want to make the slim pencil skirt and I've got the Rita blouse and at the back I've got the Liz dress as well. I've got my fairy lights on it, they're not switched on yet. I've just bought this one from Etsy which is a vintage pattern, vintage house coat. Uh, it just shows you how sizing has changed. I mean this look is a size 18 and the bust is 36 and hips 38. I mean wow, I think that's a size 10 now isn't it? But anyway, there we go. So yeah, I absolutely love this and I want to make this. So I've seen some Lady McElroy fabric on Sherwoods that I've got in mind for this that I think will really work with the vintage, the vintage vibe there. I've just got this one, the Fiona from Fabric Magpie. She is shutting down her shop, so she's got 20% off everything at the minute. So I bought the Fiona dress. It's very similar to the dress that I wore in my 2020 Roundup vlog. And that was a dress that I bought from All Saints and I love wearing it. So I knew when I bought it, because I bought it in the sale, it did remind me of the Fiona and I thought I would have a go at making one myself as well in a dark denim. I think that would look really nice. So I'm glad I've got that one. And then I've got a few Avid Seamstress patterns. I've got the blazer, uh, the day dress, which I've already made. I have... The, the blouse and I've got the shift dress and then at the back is the coat and then over in the corner I've got my mannequin just stood up there uh, there is some more wool in my little basket there this is one of those Bolgatanga baskets that I got from Lisa Comfort Home I've got my little plastic plant from Ikea and my vintage singer 401k I think it is no it's 201k so that's as much as I've got done in here at the moment because to be honest I've been sewing and I'm just loving spending time in this space with having the extra you know the windows and the double doors leading into the conservatory as well it just means that I've got so much light in here and it's just great it's really nice space. I've still got a lot of work to do because what was the sewing room upstairs now needs a really good sort out. I need to sort my fabric out and there's still a few bits and pieces up there that need to come down here. So I think things will change and evolve as time goes by, but I hope you've enjoyed having a little look around my new sewing space. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think down below and if you think of anything that could 
improve it. We're not going to redecorate as yet. It's still decorated as it was as our dining room, but I quite like it as it is. I don't think, you know, I'm not in any sort of urgent rush to redecorate in here. I think for now, you know, it's it's working great as, as the space that it is. So yeah, so that's that. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed having a look around my new sewing room. If you have, please give this video a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. The link should be just down below. And I look forward to being back with you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.